Gamers! Leo Vader here for Game Informer. I have been doing absolutely nothing but playing Red Dead Online since it came out. It has consumed my life and I am loving it! My posse and I have discovered a ton of small things that have made our experience more fun, and I am going to share them with you now. Player and posse assassination stranger missions always target the nearest player or posse, so if you find them and get in position before your leader talks to the quest giver, you can kill them all and win the mission the second it starts. It's really helpful because given the chance, most people run away when they're notified they're being hunted. There are wardrobes not just at camp, but in the back of the tailor and in the back of certain general stores like the one in Rhodes. If you want to play stealthy but your friends don't have bows, give them throwing knives or cleavers by chucking them into a tree. They can pick them up. Also, play stealthy. It's way more competent than GTA 5 and it's very satisfying. If you're just starting out, put your free ability points into anything but stamina. You will hit max level in stamina before you even get close in anything else. Buy the pamphlet for split point ammo when you can. Not only do you work towards the crafting awards by crafting 50 rounds a minute, but it costs no resources besides the original bullets and you get a big XP bonus for every kill you get with special ammo like split point. Use Deadeye a lot, especially when engaging with players. No matter which Deadeye card you chose, Deadeye makes your lock on time instantaneous and it will win you gunfights. I recommend the perk card the unblinking eye that makes Deadeye drain slower. Even at level 1 it's extremely noticeable. It also makes Eagle Eye last longer, which is useful for hunting. Press Square or Xbox X on the side of any boxy wagons to hop on and hang off the side, then left stick to move around. I love it. Hunting seems to be the best way to make money, I've got a few tips for that. Invest in the varmint rifle and the pamphlet for small game arrows. Those $1 pelts add up and they go right in your satchel, so you don't lose them when you get kicked from the server or killed. You can lose a lot of carcasses off your horse that way. Every once in a while when you're riding, look up and just shoot some birds. Big rare birds like vultures and owls drop feathers that go for a buck fifty. So if you get a perfect one, that's four fifty without even bringing a corpse back. This one blew my mind, and I think it's a bug. Hitting a small animal that's one or two star, poor or good, with the right weapon, it will still net you a perfect pelt. Or if it's small game like squirrels, the whole thing becomes three star perfect. Again, this is probably a bug, but I really hope it's not because it makes learning the hunting system much more rewarding and fun. If you don't have the right weapon to kill a big animal, lasso it and you'll get a kill prompt when you get close to him. And that's always clean as if you killed him with the right weapon. For prisoner breakout missions, the early release ones, you can steal the whole wagon and wait to free the prisoners till the very end so you don't have to escort them individually on your horse. Incidentally, if you want a specific stranger mission because you're making a tips video, server hopping will give you different ones from the same people. There's a pocket watch you can buy for gold, do not do it. Any pocket watch you loot off a corpse can be equipped from your satchel, then accessed from the item wheel. Don't forget to reset your awards once you complete them so you get more XP and gold. You can reset pretty much any award with five tiers, including spending money at shops. The awards with only one tier are usually the ones that can't be reset. Steal wagons for you and your friends because it's fun and there are awards for traveling in a coach. These awards max out at 100 miles versus the horse's 1,000, so you're getting them more often. Steal a train for you and your friends because it's fun, and because in the northeast of the map, it passes four gang hideouts, and you can get the award for doing four gang hideouts in one day. But sometimes they don't spawn, like when you're recording clips for this video. Also, there's an award for traveling via train and shooting animals from the train. Story missions pay out more for how long it takes to do them. Up to 30 minutes, I believe. So you can take your time and do some small game hunting mid-mission to maximize XP at the end. The Fort Mercer Assault mission pays out $55 and 1,000 XP if you take 30 minutes with it. Do this before they nerf it. Stranger missions also work this way. Don't be afraid to take a little extra time on your way to the objective, because it can be the difference between an $8 payout and a $14 payout. Ooh la la. A surprising amount of people don't want to kill you. Practice your dead-eye draw and be ready if others go hostile, but more often than not I end up exchanging waves and going about my day. This is a big one we've been spending a lot of time trying to figure out. Cold weather outfits. They're tough to make. Most of the cold weather pieces are rank locked, so if you want to spend time in the mountains, it may be worth using some of that thanks for playing gold to get them early. Upper body seems to be most important. I recommend gloves, a vest, woolen sweater or wool shirt if you're playing as a dude, and the Montana coat you get with the Grizzlies Outlaw outfit, which is free for PS4 players. These are all rank locked again, but you can press L2 to buy them early with gold. The sheep's wool jacket says it's sure to keep you warm, but that's just fun flavor text. It does not. It's probably a bug, but we tested it, and right now it really does not. So don't buy that. You can always just cook a lot of meat to replenish your cores while you're up in the cold. My shirtless friend survives fine that way. But exploring the Grizzlies is worthwhile. Coulter is a great gang hideout, and there's a stranger that you may recognize who exclusively gives you really fun missions. Some herbs you have to eat out of your satchel before you know what their properties are. You can sell herbs you always have too much of and never use for a couple bucks at the doctor's office, and that award resets really fast. So it's worth it for the gold. I recommend learning to recognize useful plants. Wild carrots almost completely refill your horse cores, and they're very easy to spot. They're tall and thin with big white flowers. Plants spawn separately for you and your posse members, but in the same place. So if you 
you spot something good, you can tell your posse and you can all come get it. Open the catalog and buy a ton of extra ammo for all the guns you use, and mailboxes become ammo refilling stations. People say you can loot treasure maps from gang members in hideouts and NPC ambushes, but it's never happened to me and I am pissed off about it. Certain strangers like Hamish and the one at McFarlane Ranch are honorable, and they'll sometimes give you extra rewards for doing their mission non-lethally. You should get a tooltip about it when you approach the camp, and or the stranger will mention it in the dialogue. Then fistfight or lasso your way through the camp, it is extremely fun. I'm gonna go rejoin Lenny's cowpokes and it should put me right with Sam. Oh, does that work? Yeah. Oh sh that's so much easier, I didn't know that. Perhaps that's a tip of some kind. Ooh! The rejoin posse option will put you in the same server and location as the leader quickly. The most useful food to cook is spiced big game meat. It refills your cores the most, and it's the only type of meat that can fortify your core. And it's left and right in the d-pad to switch between the spices when cooking. And you get that big game meat from big game, da doy, like gators, but also wolves. So next time you get attacked by wolves, go for clean headshots with the bow or a rifle, and walk away with nine hunks of big game meat. For fishing, it only costs 3 gold to get the spinner lure early, which increases your chance of catching any fish. If you catch a fish you'd rather eat than sell, you can break it down into meat in your satchel. Oh here's a tip, you should parkour around Saint Denis because it's fun and it is the best jumping and climbing mechanics Rockstar has ever done. I had no idea how solid it was until I started climbing around Saint Denis. Obvious one, but diving with left trigger and square disengages the enemy lock-on. If you and an enemy are pointing guns at each other for more than a second, dive or make peace with your gods. Some bars, like the one in Valentine, have free food that actually replenishes your health core. There's also free stew just south of the Valentine stable. If you get stuck off a ledge, turn friendly fire on for your posse and have them lasso you and pull right trigger to haul you up. They need to stay close to the edge or the line is more likely to break. Oh, oh, up, oh drag him. Right trigger. <laughs> oh. All right. Pull him up, pull him up. No, you gotta tell me where the treasure is. <laughs> Buying a theme affects every tent you buy after that, so the high price actually has a good long-term cosmetic payoff. Nerd alert! There's free beer behind the small bar in Saint Denis, so don't ever pay for drinks there. If you've got a minute, look through the awards and find some easy fun ones. For example, shooting a flying animal with a bow is probably the easiest one in the game, or if you have a decent horse, do the race awards from town to town for easy XP. Card upgrades cost 350 and then 500 for the final tier, and pamphlets are around that same range. So if you check the rank unlocks under progress and saw you have one of those coming up, start saving your money. Hitch your horse to a tree before a gang hideout, so instead of a 100% chance of losing the carcasses you have on it, it's only a 99% chance. If your horse is right on top of a carcass, the skinning animation is mostly skipped, but also they are some of the best animations ever animated and you better look at them. Final tip. Interfering with other people's stranger missions is not griefing. It's why they take place in the open world and it makes the missions way more fun and dynamic. For instance, my posse completed one because we sent a decoy wagon into town ahead of the small wagon we were supposed to escort, and the rival players destroyed the wrong one. That would never happen if you only fought NPCs. Well, that's all I got for now. Shouts out to my posse Lenny's Cowpokes for helping me discover these tips and get these clips. We've also been learning the incredibly deep and fun fist fighting system, so subscribe to Game Informer for a detailed breakdown of that in the coming days. And that's what you call a ring dang dupe.